Hey, this is Kevin with Consumer Reports, and what you're looking at here is Ruger's new PC carbine. And I'm really wrapping up the uh, review on this particular firearm. I've already released uh, four videos out there which talk about what's in the box, um, external and operational features, disassembly, and range testing. And even though I'm releasing this video last, it really should re really represent the intro into this whole review. Um, I spent a lot of time talking about all the features and the other parts of the review, so I'm not going to go in overly in-depth here. A uh, couple of things real quick is that at my website, GunsumerReports.com, there is a, a, a web page portion of this review where you can go in and you can click through each one of the different parts and there's lots of photos and I go through and uh, cover all of the features and then I'm, I actually list some of what I think are pros and cons and then some of my final bottom line comments. Again, I go into so much detail in the, uh, the other parts of the review. I'm just going to hit some of the high points here. So the PC carbine is a 9mm takedown. You can see the split right here. It's got a threaded barrel. It's got a fluted barrel, which to me has kind of, kind of got a heavy profile on it. Ruger uh, ships it with two uh, magwell inserts, one for their SR9 series magazines and one for Glock magazines. And right now I've got the Glock magazine insert in. And that's the way I left it after range testing. And I was able to use some of these 33 round mags right here and it, it worked without issue. It, uh, it comes with some shim spacers here so you can go through and you can shim up your stock right here to uh, change the length of pull or decrease the length of pull also. It has a pretty good trigger pull on it and uh, it comes in around 4 pounds and has a pretty good feel to it. The charging handle right here is ambidextrous. You can flip it to either side and the mag release button right here is also ambidextrous and you can flip it to either side. It comes with a good pair of um, we'll say Iron sight. It's got a ghost ring here in the back and in the front it's got a uh, protected post. It's got a really good sight picture and I think most people will be happy with it. It also comes with a um, machined integral Picatinny rail on the upper receiver and you can see in this case right here I've got the uh, Burris Full Field TAC-30 um, 1 to 4 power scope installed on it. It also comes with a, a Picatinny rail short section here up front uh, so you can attach a bipod or a light or a laser, whichever you want. I've got a, a bipod on it right now. And a swing swivel stud in the front and an integral stud here in the back. And overall, it's a pretty pretty nice platform. And I've been very pleased with it. And if you go through and take the time to look at the other parts of the review, I think you'll, uh, you'll probably come to that same opinion. Since this part of the video is really intended to be a, a quick overview and summary, I'm going to jump through and not talk about any of the features anymore other than what I've listed in my pros and cons sections here at my webpage. And the uh, the first is is that the takedown feature makes it very compact makes it a very compact platform if desired. Um, Ruger does have a a case that it'll fit in, but it won't fit in the case with an optic on. So if you're interested in using Ruger's case that'll handle this this a takedown platform, you got to be prepared to take your optic off. Uh, for me, for this particular optic, I don't have the case, but I do have a couple of quick, re quick release mounts, UTG mounts, on here, and you can see uh, details on, the mount, on those mounts in part five of my review. Another pro is that it accepts pistol magazines. So if you've already got your SR9 platform, um, like, like I've got here, and uh, you've already got some magazines that you may not have to buy a bunch of extra ones. It comes with one SR9 magazine already. Like I mentioned earlier, it also comes with a magwell insert that you can change out to be able to use some Glock magazines. Ruger also made it uh, a, another insert for their Ruger American pistol, and uh, you can you can get that insert also. I put down here as a con down here in my review is that Ruger doesn't have a Beretta magazine or magwell insert for this yet. I think there's a lot of people out there who, um, who, who, who like the Beretta platform and probably have a lot of Beretta mags. You know, I've got several myself and that might just give, uh, give Ruger uh, 
an even greater following if they could come up with a magwell insert again i put that as a con it's really maybe it's not a con but i had to put something another pro i put in there was a sight picture and uh, even with the iron sights i really like that sight picture with the ghost ring in the back and the uh, protected post in the front and the distance that the ghost ring was from my eye even even with my bifocals or whatever it is, I, I felt like I was doing pretty good with it. But I really like that sight picture and there's a good chance for a lot of people out there that they may choose not to put an optic on it after they go through and look through the sights on this particular firearm. I stated that another pro was the trigger pull on it. Again, it's about four-ish pounds. And, um, you know, I had just a little bit of creep. Then it broke pretty crisply and then it had some over travel. And uh, overall, I was pretty happy with the trigger pull on this. A couple of other pros is its ability to be ambidextrous um, with the bolt uh, charging handle and with the mag release. I think a lot of people might end up switching the bolt to the uh, left-hand side for a preferred configuration. Right now, I have it in its standard configuration, but uh, at some point, I may switch it to the other side. During my range testing, uh, I also found this, that this particular firearm to be very, very accurate. Uh, for for a um, a carbine, and I think some of that accuracy uh, comes in from the fact that Ruger chose to go with a heavy profile barrel here, and then they also put in some fluting into it to try to reduce the weight just a little bit. Overall, the the rifle does have a little bit of heft to it, and that was one of the comments that I made in here, is that the uh, the weight of the carbine is on the high end compared to other popular carbines, but the weight's not too much and helps make this firearm. Uh, a little bit softer to shoot. I think another pro are the spacers that you can put back here to be able to change the length of pull in uh, half inch in increments uh, up to an inch and a half total from the shortest to the longest. And I think that gives the opportunity to make this firearm um, uh, usable by a variety of different heights or age people. One of the uh, comments that I found in there, they, they put the Picatinny rail here, and I really like that. But it was one of those things to where is it a pro or a con or just really a comment, but I, I thought it was worth noting, is that the length of that rail is relatively short. And if you've got something, uh, a light, for example, like the, the Streamlight TLR1, uh, for example, that type of light, the overall length of it was so long, and the front lug on the light wouldn't allow it to mount at this location. So... If you're looking at putting a light or a laser on this, make sure that you, you uh, are looking at a shorter profile or you kind of take some um, dimensional references to, to ensure that it's going to be able to mount on this particular firearm. Another pro, and probably the, one of the most important pros, is I went through and I shot a plethora of groups here, uh, and I thought shot 34 five-shot groups. And the average group size at 50 yards for my 34 five-shot groups was 1.61 inches, which I thought was, was very, very good for this platform. And the other thing that I think is another pro and is also very important is that I found it to be 100% reliable with all the ammunition that I put through this rifle. And uh, that, you know, when you start looking at reliability and accuracy, those are probably some of the most important features that you can, you can ask for in a firearm. And a lot of the other features clearly add bling value to it, but if it can't shoot and it can't shoot reliably, then it, it's probably not a good firearm. This one does, and I've been extremely happy with it. I want to give you a real quick understanding of the ammo I shot through it. And uh, I started out a lot with this, uh, this Tull ammo, or I call it Tula, which is 115 grain uh, full metal jacket. You know, it's got a big round nose on the end of it. And uh, every, again, everything fed 100% reliable. I'm just kind of giving you an idea of what I put through it. And I've got the Hornady um, American Gunner. It's their XTP uh, bullet, which to me is it's like a hollow point, but it's actually got a taper on the side of it, so it's more of an angled hollow point. You went over here to their critical defense, the Hornady. You know, it's got the little um, plastic tip in the end of that. It all fed great. I looked at some of the Hornady 125 grain. These others were 115. Um, uh, HAP round here. Again, it's a very similar shape. All of these fed great. Looked at the critical duty here and a plus P round, 135 grains, shot great. Went all the way up to Hornady's 147 grain uh, custom XTP. 
and you can see the uh, shape on that again shot great then I tried some of the Sig Sauer um, ammunition here and it's got a, a slightly larger we'll say hollow point tip on it you can see that the profile difference is a, a little bit different and all of this fed perfectly without an issue and after going through and doing my range testing um, I did shoot it because it had a has a threaded barrel over there so I did shoot it with a suppressor and particularly I was interested in the Hornady uh, 147 grain here and the SIG 147 grain here I was interested to see what uh, velocities I'm going to get out of this 16-inch uh, uh, barrel compared to the, we'll say, 4-inch barrel that most of the data comes in on uh, velocities for these rounds. And what happens, I guess, because of the differences in the burn rate of the propellant, the Hornady's are actually coming in at, uh, at supersonic ranges, where the uh, SIG over here was still coming in at a subsonic velocity range. So after doing that, uh, uh, you know, if I were to select between one of these two right now as far as shooting with my suppressor installed, I'd probably go with the SIG because it's still going to have a subsonic range and I'll be able to maximize my sound reduction shooting this round. The takeaway from this is that if you're looking at using it with a suppressor, then you may want to um, go and chronograph some of your loads to make sure that they're all coming in at the velocities that you'd want in the subsonic range. When I did install the suppressor uh, here on the end of the barrel, um, I took the O-ring, there's an O-ring that's up under there. I took the O-ring off uh, when I was doing my range testing and that O-ring is really required to uh, provide kind of like a, we'll say like a lock washer so the thread, pr uh, thread protector doesn't work loose. During my range testing, it did work loose, but the O-ring, I didn't have it installed. When the O-ring was installed, there was no issue. As far as point of impact shift, I did notice a slight point of impact shift in shooting uh, this firearm with the suppressor installed versus not installed. And I think that just has to do with me changing the harmonics of the barrel slightly. So you may want to check that out if you're planning on using a suppressor. The last pro I want to talk about is there's, you know, different people have made comments on whether it be this or other, other takedown firearms is that if you've got a receiver mounted optic how accurate or, or does your zero shift whenever you remove and reinstall the barrel I went through here on this Ruger PC carbine I did five shots removed and reinstalled the barrel between those each shot and ended up shooting about a I don't know it's just right at an inch group at 50 yards which was in line with all of the other data that I took so in my opinion if you go through and you adjust this nut right here so that you get rid of all the free play whenever you install your barrel then you're going to end up with a very 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 repeatable zero um, putting the barrel back on with the receiver mounted optic alright that kind of covers the pros and cons that I found and, and the basic features of this particular carbine again make sure you check out uh, my website or my other YouTube video reviews the, uh, the bottom line comment that I, I want to say on this Ruger PC carbine if you're waiting to get a 9mm carbon carbine, then head to the store and place your order for a Ruger PC carbine now. I never fully appreciated a pistol carbine until now, and at this point can't see myself without having one. Uh, this firearm shot great, was 100% reliable with everything I put through it, and it appears to be a quality built firearm. I feel this carbine has the same potential to be one of Ruger's legendary platforms. And I expect to see uh, other calibers released uh, in this platform in the near future. Well, that kind of wraps up this overall intro summary to the uh, Ruger PC carbine. And if you like this review, please like or subscribe or both or share it with your friends. And I'll try to keep bringing more detailed reviews in the future. Thanks.